All right, kicking things off. Uh, hello, South by Southwest, wherever you may be. Uh, and welcome to what is uh, one of TikTok's first ever panels uh, for music during uh, this event. Uh, my name is William Gruger. I'm the editorial lead at TikTok uh, here in the States. And it is my pleasure to bring to you guys a all-star cast and all-star lineup of music experts on TikTok to discuss the various ways in which music, culture, songs, and artists trend and break on the TikTok platform. So just to sort of level set here, just to kick things off, you know, music is TikTok's universal language. Uh, it is the glue that holds everything together on the app, and each song represents a flourishing web of emotions, jokes, dances, memes, you name it. Um, it has become a launch pad for artists. Um, a vehicle for new songs, emerging artists to find success, audiences, and deals. Um, it is a space where both top tier artists and emerging artists can thrive. Um, we've seen artists from across the board inter uh, inter interact on the platform in new and innovative ways. Um, and it has become a vital livelihood and part of the industry. Um, you know, every single song these days has a TikTok narrative, uh, and we are excited to work as a part of that industry in keeping music front and center as a part of TikTok's success. So jumping right into it here uh, and introducing our all-star cast here. Um, he is the founder of a channel, Mostly Music, with 233,000 followers, bringing back into the limelight the good old days of music, pitchfork style music review journalism, and has been dubbed by Rolling Stone Magazine as the future of music journalism. Uh, Max Motley, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks for having me, William. Very good. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna go into a little bit about yourself uh, and, and uh, how you got on TikTok and how you got started? Uh, yeah, so um, I've always known I wanted to work in music and I worked in radio for three years and then I, um, and then I interned at Paradigm Talent Agency, all's looking well and then COVID hits and all of a sudden my friends are being laid off who do work in the industry and it required a little outside the box thinking and I saw a lot of attention and time and resources um, by people in the industry being poured into TikTok. So I was like, I'm gonna try and understand the platform. I missed my radio show because it got canceled obviously because of COVID. So I kind of just brought that to TikTok and I was super surprised, but also very happy to see that people were interested in hearing people talk about music on, on the app. Awesome. Uh, moving right along uh, to our next, our next panelist has defined her own genre of music introspective deep dives, so much so that she's even spawned off her own style of parody video. Uh, Dev Lemons, aka Song Psych, welcome. What's going on? Thank you for having me. How long what, what was the inspiration for, for your channel, Song Psych, and how did you really get involved uh, and started off creating on TikTok? So, I mean, I had been creating on TikTok for a while before Song Psych, just trying to like promote my own music and stuff like that, just, you know, enjoying the memes. And um, Song Psych actually, during quarantine, I figured, you know, why not learn music theory? And then, but I was also working at this company called Good Content as a video editor. And then my boss reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, like TikTok's got this great education initiative they're launching. Like we should do something. Do you have any ideas? And I was just like, yeah, like we should do something around music and like music theory. I just think that would be so fun. And then we just sort of workshopped the idea into what it is now. And yeah, now, me and good content. Got a great team of people working on music theory videos. It's really fun. That's great. We're gonna we're gonna include links to all of this in a in a blog post for for those of you at home to follow along with. But uh, some of the best stuff out there. Um, you know, Max Max and Dev really represent uh, what I think as the 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 top tier of uh, this emerging class of music curator creators that exist on the app. That really uh, make TikTok a really, really vibrant place of just like learning and doing deep dives about new and exciting music. 
Um, so the next two on our panel, we are joined by two fantastic artists. Um, she is a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, producer, DJ, bass virtuoso, and just all around New York City cool kid, uh, Blue to Tiger, welcome. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Of course, we are gonna dive uh, very deeply into you and your career later on. Um, so excited to get there. Um, moving on again, just to, just to get through the introductions here, uh, Ty Verde's uh, song Stuck in the Middle has more than 2.2 million creates on the platform, took flight, hitting number one on the Spotify viral charts. His latest singer, single Bad Bad News just dropped. I mean, Ty, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, motherfuckers? How's it going? We're doing good. good. <laughs> I'm great, man. It's great to be here. We're all here. Here we are. That's the intros. Great, guys. So, so to kick things off, right, you know, we've got musicians, we've got music curators, but, you know, most of all, you know, everyone on this panel is just a TikTok fiend and on the app all day. So just to kick it off with a question for everybody, like, what is on your For You page today? Uh, when you when you when you flip open the app and log in, what do you see? Uh, I can start. I got I got a I get cast iron pan restoration videos. Um, I get the I get the Planet Money kid doing his like awkward finance deep dives, um, and then I get I get that like um, that 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 uh, Estelle Fortnite kid song remix. I don't know if you guys are getting that at all. <laughs> all of the above, every single thing. Oh yes, love the Fortnite parody. Loki know all the words. Do you? We're gonna we're gonna make you sing it if you if you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I should have just said anything. The thing Ooh, I love the feeds on your end. Um, a lot of my feed is now you know that thing where it makes your whole face um like lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or like it's like a mirror, mirror waterfall type thing, and then you check time your teeth to see if scan is what they call that. Time right? warp scan. Yeah. See, this is why you're the expert. So they, they, that's how they pay me to work there, I guess. Right? I gotta, I gotta learn. <laughs> I gotta learn these things. Yeah, I'm that's a good a lot one. The, I'm getting a lot of the um, people knocking on their windows. They're like, bam, 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 and then and then they put their hand down. And they're like, I tricked you. I got you. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh my god, you guys haven't seen these? No, oh, this is blue. Thing. No, blue. I've seen it. Don't worry. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. No, it's like everywhere. It's like people in their car windows and then they're like banging on the thing, but that's actually like the windows down. It's crazy. I'm getting a lot of those. And people singing in their cars. I get that like all day. Nice. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of like voice actor challenges too. Like like everyone like I saw like a hip hop artist Red Bale do that the other day where it's like you're reading weird things about the side effects of a, a certain kind of drug, like for a commercial. I've gotten some of those. Like, and like, yeah. Comexa. Shout out Comexa. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Comexa. <laughs> that, that style of voiceover too, like it's the, so, the super polished, it sounds like uncanny when you watch somebody doing it. It's like very uncanny valley. It's very odd, but very, very, very interesting. Odd. <laughs> yeah, Max, what about you? What do you get in your feeds? Uh, well, I definitely have been seeing a lot of the voice actor things, and then also I've been getting like this interesting like alt. I guess it's kind of like almost an alt TikTok or hyper pop TikTok, but um, people have been doing this like weird thing where it's like the moment you fucked up, and then it'll like s stop the video on a picture, and then it'll rotate with like these animations and stuff, and it's to the song um, "Sugar Crash," which I think is number two on the U.S. viral charts right now. So yes. Um, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna do a whole deep dive into hyper pop later, uh, <laughs> folks. So stay tuned. But I think everyone here is a massive fan of hyper pop. Um, well, awesome. So you know, as you know, moving right along, right? Like, just you can see just from the examples there. Like, I mean, you log into TikTok, and it is you un as unique as every single person. What you're getting in these feeds, uh, what what you're sort of seeing in the feeds is like the deepest corners of anybody's brain and psychology, right? And like. You know, because of that, because everybody is so different, the types of music and the ways that that music takes off on the platform varies. And that's a really big key theme that we really hope to highlight in this discussion. Um, and so 
really just getting into it, you know, there's a number of reasons we sort of identified as like why that for you feed might be so sticky. Um, and, 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 and really like what is really going on there on a psychological level to like, as you're scrolling that feed that makes that content and the music that it's tied to so sticky. Max, I'd love for you to go into the mere exposure effect and sort of like the psychology behind that stickiness. Yeah, so just for background, like in college, I was a marketing major and psychology minor. And so obviously when I first got on TikTok, I was like thinking about what I learned in class was applying to the platform. And one of the first things that I thought of was the mere exposure effect, which is the idea that the more you see something, or in this case, hear something, the more you tend to like it. And like very brief overview of kind of why that is, is um, some people think it's because you're essentially more familiar with it. So it's more comfortable and you tend to like that. But um, like the question I like to pose is, have you ever listened to a song, not liked it at first, but then heard it a couple more times and then you liked it? Well, on TikTok, this kind of like times that by like a thousand, because instead of listening to a song like a couple more times, you're going to hear that song like a thousand plus times, because there's 10 to 15 songs that are kind of in rotation that you kind of are hearing in like a lot of videos. And so I feel like the implication of hearing the same song over and over and over um, with the mere exposure effect, you tend to grow this uh, affinity for the song. And not only the same song, but you're hearing the, ten the same 10 to 15 seconds of the same song, um, which uh, who knows, Dev might, might know more about hearing like a piece of a song. Yeah, totally. I mean, like my, a good example I can think of of like the mere exposure effect working on me with TikTok is when Money Machine by 100 Gex kept showing up on my feed. And at first I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this song. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't think I like it. And then it kept showing up and I kept hearing the chorus and I was like, wait, like, this is, this is dope. And then like, I went and I listened to the whole song and I was like, wow, I think I really like this. And then I just listened to the whole album and then, you know, by the end of 2020, three out of five of my top five songs of 2020 are by 100 Gex, and it's all thanks to TikTok. <laughs> and um, on top of that too, like not only is that one of the like psychological phenomenons that I've sort of seen on the app, but like there's this other thing called the Zygarnik effect, which is basically um, this professor sort of found this phenomenon when he noticed that waitresses and waiters like had a better time remembering incomplete orders and the orders that were already completed and paid for. And um, mm -hmm. that can totally be like transferred over to music in the sense that like we remember songs that are like sort of incomplete, like we haven't heard the whole song, we've only heard a snippet, like that's what gets stuck in your head when like a song gets stuck in your head, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the whole song doesn't get stuck in your head. It's usually like one little part of the chorus or something. And then um, as they found in the study, like waitresses and stuff could better, like they didn't remember complete tasks as much. So that sort of transfers to like, oh, if you wanna get a song out of your head, go listen to the whole song and like, maybe that'll get it out of your head. So I just think that's a really cool way that TikTok can not only sort of like drive song awareness and like exposure in the app, but it is really effective at actually um, giving musicians like genuine exposure and like genuine streams and stuff like yeah. that. I think uh, I think Photo ID by by Remy Wolf was a song that happened to me with that little uh, that little voice voiceover uh, spot that went viral on the platform and I was like who what is this went in the song is fantastic the artist is even more fantastic and compelling I and mean, that's a, another great example like the Wolves intro that's another one that I think about a lot with like I don't think a lot of folks on our on on, on the the Zoomers on the app weren't really around when that dropped during that era of Kanye but. Uh, when that went on viral on the platform, people were like, oh, what is this? Got to dive in. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the, another big part of the, like the diversity, right? Like, you know, you're, th you're scrolling through this feed and you're getting all sorts of different interest pockets, right? Like I think in, 
you know, my intro, I talked about what cast iron pans and planet money, right, stuff. So, you know, the music that you get served is just as diverse. And so just wanted to bring up closely also another concept is con context collapse. Um, something that's been talked about since, you know, streaming and Spotify and everything first hit the table where, you know, now that everything is just a click away, you know, the barriers between genres, whereas on the radio, it was all rock, all pop, hip hop, what have you. Now everything's just a click away. And the For You feed just overdrives that completely. And so people's music tastes are as diverse as the content in their For You feeds. And it's almost like you really see that reflected, not just in people's streaming behaviors, but almost like in the playlisting frameworks, a lot of these streaming services are taken. The rise of the sort of like, I don't know what you call it, like Gen Z genreless playlist, the lorem, uh, the pollen playlist, whatnot. Um, one of which uh, somebody on this panel is on the cover of at the current moment. Shout out to Blue. Hey guys. Hey. It's me. <laughs> um, so I know this this whole thing, uh, you know, supercharges uh, songs discoverability and impact, like in the industry. Um, you know, uh, 176 different songs passed a billion views on TikTok in 2020. Um, 90 songs that went viral and trended on the platform climbed uh, the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, 15 of those songs hitting number one on the charts. Uh, in the past year, 70 artists broke through, uh, received major label deals on the platform. Um, of those 176 songs, one of them that hit a billion views, one of them did so in just three days. Um, the almost made for TikTok single Tusi Slide by Drake. Um, almost one that seems like uh, almost like engineered in focus group for the platform. What do we think? I very much agree. I mean, like being a teenager throughout the 2010s, like whether it was take care or views, like I've listened to a fair amount of Drake in my time and never have I heard Drake made uh, a dancey song like as directly like dance to my song, right foot up, left foot slide, and like walking you through each instruction. Um, like I've never seen that happen before. And so do I think it's a coincidence that this song came out right as TikTok is like becoming this major machine for music and like without having like a TikTok trend, it doesn't seem like you can get a number one billboard spot. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence, but who knows, maybe it is. Yeah. And I think also another element of that song relates to what Deb was talking about earlier, where, you know, that song actually leaked on TikTok, right? So like, it actually, I think Ao and Teo, I believe, posted a snippet of it, like maybe ahead of schedule, like as, as sometimes happens. And we only heard that snippet. So I was going, what in the world is this? So by the time it dropped three days later, it was just like, poof, had a little bit of a teaser effect going on there. Um, and just looking at some of these other artists of like the top one, top tracks for the year, um, just looking down this list, uh, Sada Baby, you know, whole lot of choppas, uh, Pop Hunnas, uh, Corvette Corvette, um, you know, DJ Chosen, Beat King, Huheem. Um, I, these weren't people I'd really heard of a year ago. I mean, so it's another one of these things where it's like the music really matters and it can really shotgun these, these, these artists' names into like household recognition. Um, I think a really big, you know, it, it would behoove us to sort of, you know, when we're talking about these top charting songs, these big success stories um, from last year, first acknowledging with the group, moving on to this next section of like one of 2021's already biggest success stories, Olivia Rodrigo. Um, you know, driver's license dropped on January 8th um, and immediately put her on the, on the mainstream map, uh, co-signed by Taylor Swift. That song hit number one on the Billboard charts immediately. Um, you know, broke the single Spotify uh, day record for streams. I mean, what is going on behind that particular song? Dev, Dev, any 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 insight into into why TikTok, you know, really really latched onto that song in particular? Yeah, I when I first heard this song and like saw the buzz around it, I was just like, who? is this like I had never heard of Olivia Rodrigo so I was just like wow like I just felt like she came out of nowhere 
Um, but then I like looked into her and I had no idea she was like a child star and she's on a Disney show that's like high school musical, the musical. And I think um, it's just so interesting too, because as I kept looking into it, I realized there was all this lore around the song. And it was like this song about another Disney star who who like stole her boyfriend who is another Disney star like there's just so much gossip and I think also because TikTok is so good at reaching a younger demographic like people who use the app are probably familiar with this drama and stuff so then when this song came out it was like oh my god did Olivia really diss that like Sabrina or whatever. It's Sabrina just Sabrina like, Carpenter like, awesome. is the name is the name you're looking for here. And the the uh, the boy that that broke her heart is a fellow co-star Joshua Bassett. Um, and that is the 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 house who she drives by last week in the song. I I, I believe, but you know, it, uh, all of these clues are all sort of subtweets, right? And so, um, even people that weren't musicians or whatever were were, were sharing, you know fragments using the green screen effect to like share fragments of tweets and being like why is this not like oh is she is she alluding to this or like um how i think like josh shouted out um uh shouted out congrats to olivia but then olivia didn't post his shout out on her instagram story like just uh <laughs> drama but i think that you know that song in particular has a narrative element to it you know dev you, you really spoke about the, the, the narration and, and the drama behind her and the core stars or wherever. And I think that like narrative elements is, in, in storytelling and music is a really big storytelling or storytelling is a really big element that drives songs popularity. It's, it's big in music, but it's a really, really big element of how artists can um, grow a fan base around themselves and their music on the TikTok platform through storytelling, through telling their journey. Um, and Ty, you are somebody that is, could write a masterclass in this exact form. I mean, um, you know, Stuck in the Middle is, is a story in and of itself. And you've really grown a following on TikTok uh, with the song, um, but also really telling your story. Yeah, uh, I think it's super important with TikTok just because it gives you so much more information about the artist when you post about yourself, you know, like in other, in other days back, you know, in the 2010s when artists would have to post a song and then there's no, there's no context. But with me, when you hear my song, you're like, oh, there's a context. He used to work this job. He, he thinks about his music in this way. This is how he feels. This is how he looks like when he sings. This is where he is. Like, this is like, it, when I heard a playlist on Spotify like three years ago, I would know nothing about that artist. I would just hear the song. And now people know that I worked in California out of Verizon store and my hair kind of looks like I'm homeless. Like that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let's, let's get into that story a little bit. Like, you know, what, what were you doing uh, before TikTok? Like walk us up to that point. Um, before TikTok, I was in uh, college. I thought I was going to be a basketball player. You know, you can't tell from this box, but I'm six, seven. Um, and I really just thought I had a hoop dream. Didn't work out, you know, same old story. Knees too weak, not good enough. Then I had to drop out of school. And then I just found myself in LA and I just didn't want to work a job. Um, and what I did was just find the easiest job I could, which was reality TV. Signed up, won 50 grand on a reality TV show. And I just started trying my like different things in the entertainment industry. I did podcasting. I did social media influencing. I did like sponsored posts for companies. I did stand up comedy. I did um, just, I did YouTube. Um, yeah. I did blogging, like literally everything. I tried everything. And throughout that, the through line was like, I really like music. I played music since I was like 13. I played piano. Um, and also, while I was in LA. I was trying out for these shows. Like, I would try out for American Idol and I'd try out for The Voice. Like, I've tried out each show five times and I just got denied every single time. And then last time I was like, it's getting really old, people telling me that I suck. So I practiced for an hour and a half every single day in my car. And I just documented that on TikTok. And I think people just kind of like fell in love with that, you know, concerted effort to be better. 
because that's what I really tried to do for a long mm. time. And then after that six months of working my voice, I didn't step in a music studio. So then the first two songs that I made were Stuck in the Middle and another song called Something to Cry About. But then I was just like, I guess Stuck in the Middle is the one I'm going to post. I, I spent like six hours on the song, dog. It wasn't like I had a huge formula or whatever. But what I did have was previous experience marketing myself on the internet. So I just brought all that shit, <laughs> brought all that shit over to TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, it was kind of like a match made in heaven. Um, the people who told me to do it were Gary Vaynerchuk and my little brother. And he was just like, this is how you do it. I saw Curtis Waters do it. I saw mm. uh, uh, Alexander 23 do it. I was like, there's no way I can't do this. Oh, and I and I would I was growing up seeing other people make money on the internet and leaving their jobs, and I was not going to be let out, uh, let off the hook on this one. I wanted to get TikTok and I wanted to make it stick. Awesome. Deb, you wanna you wanna jump in? Yeah, I just think like that's just so important, you know, and like just sorry, I'm trying to find the words like sharing your story on TikTok, like it's so important to get, or just like sharing your story anyway, like whether it's through the song itself or TikTok or like both, it's just so important to get people to like you. Like, and that's something that playlists, like it's near impossible to do that through just landing a play, like a placement on a big playlist, you know, because that they exactly, like Ty said, like you're just hearing the song, like, and, I just think, you know, everyone is so unique and all these musicians like have such awesome stories. Like Ty's story is so dope. And it's also just like so relatable and just really refreshing to see someone share such a like, yeah, I mean, I'm working a nine to five at Verizon and I'm like doing music. You know what I mean? Like it's real, it's really nice to see someone sort of like be like yeah I mean I'm working a real job and like I'm doing music on the side like I'm just following my dreams and I was also um wondering like since you have blown up on TikTok like has your creative process for making music changed oh that's such a good question I mean kind of because I'm working with new people um but to be honest I, I'm still writing every like the same way that I used to write nothing has changed no new ideas and that's kind of important also it's because I know what I want you know what I'm saying there's a lot of younger artists that I'm kind of not not worried about but like if you have a moment on TikTok and immediately you have a hundred million stream song there's going to be people that come into your life that say this is what you should do next and this is what you should sound like and this is what you should do next I'm too old for that shit to be honest so I'm gonna just do whatever I want and I'm not going to listen to these other people that really want that want to change what I want to do. And honestly, I got myself this far in the first place with my own decision making. I should be continuing that until something goes wrong. And even then, I like I have nothing to lose, dog. I'm, it's it's scary when you got nothing to lose because I'll literally try anything. And that's the kind of mindset that I think is going to lead me to whatever, whatever success is to me. The definition of it is I'm going to get there just because like. I don't know. I'm like a rabid dog. I can't stop. I love that. I mean, like also picking, picking, piggybacking off of Dev. Um, something I love about the way you, you've used TikTok is that for one, you never use I, like when I was watching your videos, like from early on, you're always a big wee guy. Like the audience is like a part of the journey and you really are mapping it out piece by piece. And like, as I'm seeing your videos, I'm seeing you work at the Verizon store and I'm like invested. I'm like, oh my God, is he going to quit his job? Like, I wonder like how long it's going to take. Um, so like, I think you've done like an amazing job on using the platform to really just bring all hundreds of thousands of followers or whatever that you have on the platform with you um, and celebrating like each major or even minor win together, um, which I, I personally love. I mean, that's exactly it. Even even stuff where I don't, I think I put a video up where I got a ticket and I put that one up and it got a million views on it. Like I literally just got a ticket in LA and I and it just worked out in my favor. I got a bunch of followers from just people like sharing the parts that aren't good. You know, that's the that's good. That's going to help even more because people can just uh, sympathize with you. Everyone thinks that we're so special with our problems when really there's only about like 20 real problems in the world. And we just think that 
you know what I'm saying? There's not that many problems. Everyone has, everyone can relate to each other when things go right. bad. Either like someone, someone like fucks over, we didn't get what we wanted. Like everything has, everything is related. I think what you were saying about um, not always saying, not never saying I, um, there are some creators that do a really good job of, you know, not making about them. It's all, it's, it's a giving platform. Like I really just try to give out content. If I see an artist like pop up, <laughs> hey you should listen to my song blow me up make me famous i'm not gonna do that because you're telling me what to do i don't want to do what you're saying but like, me, like me and blue blue does a really good job of like she's just like hey guys guess what do 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 and then you're all you're just in it you know what i'm saying like you just you you're already there you're already a fan you already know what she's about you can see like her background and us in her aesthetic she's not asking you for anything which makes you already assumed the role of being the artist on stage. No, Drake doesn't come out and he's like, hey guys, what do you think of my song? This is the song and you're gonna listen to it. Left foot slide, right foot slide, and it's gonna be a hit. You just have to assume the character. You can't ask to be the character. Yeah, and I think that's what's cool about TikTok is that like, you don't know who's for you page you're gonna show up on. You don't know how, you don't even know if your videos are gonna get there, but if they do get there, and those people like that video, they're gonna come along for the ride too. So it, like the, um, the experimentation of it too, of just like putting stuff out about yourself and then the people that relate to that are gonna like be rooting for you from the beginning. And that's what Ty does really well. Like showing his whole story from the beginning. Um, it's just everyone's so invested, like I'm invested too. And I know you even, but like I'm like, I look forward to your videos all the time. Um, so yeah it's just it's just crazy how you can it just puts you in front of all these people and you just kind of want to um grab those people i guess and get their attention hi hi and blue what are what are some of the most you know going off piggybacking on this concept of the we right like the we being like you guys and, and your fans and the people that create to your videos like what is what is the most surprising or interesting thing you've seen somebody do or create or admit to the soundtracks that you guys have put out on TikTok? Oh. Ooh, I mean, I had this, this wasn't to my soundtrack, but I had this guy. So like, usually I would, I kind of assume that my fans or supporters are like a little bit younger on the younger side. Mm. Um, so that's more of the audience on TikTok. But I mean, now there's like a lot, a lot more um, older people on that. But there was this one guy who made this like one minute long video. I think he was like 60 or something. Um, oh, I've seen yeah video. seen that video um I haven't seen it like it. touched my heart i was like freaking out um it was like this one minute long video of, of this guy saying that like i inspired him to play bass or something or inspired him to like pick back his bass after like 40 years of it being in the closet like something and he just like wow. went went on and on for like a minute um and it was like the sweetest thing ever and i duetted it and like the duet um like got a bunch of views and stuff because people just love that this guy was just showing his appreciation and being really really genuine about it um but that was surprising because i was like oh this is like this older like i never knew i was gonna like touch this like older man's like heart with so like he has so much experience like it was just like it was a crazy um that was a really cool moment wow yeah it was cool shout out that that's guy a perfect, that's a perfect example of just like yeah. guy, in that video though the guy goes up and he's like he has a bass in his hand and you think he's gonna pit, play the bass, and then he's like, "Guess what, guys? Yeah. Playing this bass. You guys need to go look at this other girl play the bass." And giving stuff like that on your TikTok videos, giving your audience like content is really important, I think. Yeah, or like show, like pointing people in the direction of, of yeah. um, art that you like is like sick. Like hyping people up, and duetting other musicians and bringing them into the spotlight. Like that's just, um, that's such a cool. Part of TikTok too, just the just finding cool musicians is like all of it. You know, I found so many sick musicians through TikTok. There's so many, and 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 I think you know, inspiring creativity is like one of the huge, huge, huge points we try and drive home uh, from like the TikTok. You know, what we sort of say about TikTok publicly, and our marketing collateral and stuff. It's like a huge, huge selling point for the platform, and a huge way that the platform uh, facilitates people creating and inspiring people to create is lowering the barrier to entry for people to create with creative tools and creative effects. Um, Ty earlier mentioned uh, the time warp scan, something that can 
warp your face, but I'm sure some of you guys have seen people like making entire landscapes in their videos um, to, to, with using that effect um, and coming up with all sorts of interesting ways to sort of use them. Um, the in-house teams at TikTok work tirelessly to like think of new and interesting tools and quirks that are built into that video editor that people use, then people make memes with them, and then those memes carry and shotgun the popularity of songs into the forefront. And I think that like a really good example of this is the face tracking filter. I mean, we see a lot of dancers using it to isolate their faces, but I think um, um, most notably as it relates to music is uh, the, um, uh, the reason that we all know Bella Porch as a household name is uh, the whole M to the B phenomenon. Um, the whole head bobbing uh, video that, I mean, she has like what, like millions of followers now at this point. I mean, why to the group? Like, why is that song so popular? It's a trend. It's a trend. I think it's the trend. It's the trend and the like that um that sort of trend with the face filter like some of these filters it makes it so um or these effects like makes it so easy to to use and easy to replicate and i think that's what like that's what can kind of um make the the trend go like it's like accelerate um so like a song like look like with the m to the b face filter thing people can just look at that and recreate it really easily with this and the song is already set up so i think like that makes that song just like, just blow. Um, like when they have a certain effect attached to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah I think two things, oh shoot, you go. No, you could go. Oh, all right, cool, awesome. Thank <laughs> you, Deb. Anyways, um, uh, I think it's just on TikTok, if two things combine that are really weird, you know, like, it makes a trend, like it makes just a huge trend that people want to put their own personality into. Like I've never seen anyone do this before to a song and I've never heard a song of like a diss track, British rapper, you know, girl just going off. So those are two different things. Another example of that is like having that guy that's like, I ain't never seen two bitty press friends. Like that's just like, he's saying something weird. <laughs> Crazy. Like, you know, that's like, a song now too, actually. <laughs> that kind of slaps to be honest. Like I listened to that like, like at least three times. God. But like when two when weird things combine like they wouldn't think would have happened or people showing their personality in a weird way and i think it just it makes it so things can go viral like that yeah i mean that song was out of nowhere the rapper is millie b the track is m to the b it got uh 4.8 million creations um this is like a diss track aimed at another artist uh so, so aspen who they apparently like post diss tracks back and forth at each other on youtube all day back <laughs> way back in the day i don't know where it came from or how bella porch found it but that's it um i, I guess i guess like to continue off this right like are people you know are people watching the video effect or are people listening to the song right like this reminds me of a debate from a whole previous lifetime ago when I worked at Billboard where, um, you know, uh, we had just added YouTube views into the Hot 100 charts calculations. And um, suddenly out of nowhere, Taylor Swift's Trouble shotgun back into the top 10 of the charts. And we were all going, what is going on here? How did this happen? The label is going, this is a single that, this is singles, you know, how it is. Like, it's, oh, the, the singles off cycle, now we're working single number two. We dug into the numbers and you know I get an email from my boss midway through the day being like, what is going on with these goat videos? Do you guys do you guys remember this whole thing where people were splicing in these goat uh, things into the middle of Taylor Swift? I'll, we'll include links to all this again in this blog post, but it's like, that's the question we asked ourselves. Like, well, are people engaging with Taylor Swift or engaging with the goats? And I think it's like, are people engaging with this head bob or are people engaging with Millie B's song? I, I would say like, it's gotta be both because if you look on the song on Spotify, it's got over 20 million streams. Um, but also like tying it back to earlier, this could also have to do with, once again, the mere exposure effect where you kind of gain this familiarity uh, with the song after hearing it 4.8 million times. Obviously you're not <laughs> seeing every video, I hope, 
but um, you're hearing it a lot of times. And so it's just like a, a fun sound that you have, I don't know, a, a familiarity with. So I think, I think it's a little bit of both maybe. Yeah. Um, moving along, right? We, we, we talked about face tracking. Um, transitions are a huge creative effect that leads to the popularity of songs. Um, very re recently, there is Erica Banks' Buss It, the Buss It Challenge, where, uh, you know, everyone loves a good fashion glow up, right? You're starting off looking plain, like you roll out of bed, bam, ready to go out. We love it. Um, we also mentioned Curtis Waters earlier. That's another one that went huge due to, like, transition effects, right? What was, Dev, do you remember the, the exact sort of, like, create trend behind that one? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like there were just so many different trends, I feel like under that song, but the one that comes to my head, the, f like the most is sort of like those fashion trends where fashion people ones, yeah. put their hand over the camera and they'd be in a different outfit to the beat. And like, I, I don't know, I did a video on this song. It was just so cool. And it's, um, it's just, I feel like having the beat, like how it hit, like four on the floor, like it hits on the hard beats. Mm. It makes it so easy to follow and sort of like anticipate when you're gonna, not only for the video creator, when you're gonna do those transitions, but like for the viewer, it's like just really satisfying to watch like these visuals of people changing outfits on the beat to like this really catchy song. And I think that like sort of, I mean, kind of loosely ties back to like the whole M to the B, thing in the sense that like I feel like in all music really just I feel like music was made to have visuals with it you know what I mean mm -hmm. whether it's like a fashion video or just like a face tracking thing I feel like when you have like sort of a memorable visual associated with your song like it does wonders yeah I mean absolutely um you know we so we, we've talked about yeah so so we've talked about uh, you know, do you transitions, um, you know, makeup transitions are another one sort of like under that sort of like fashion category. There's a lot of like makeup transition ones like that haha ha little darky song. That's another one that comes to mind. Um, another creative effect that we see all the time leading to the rise in popularity of music is the duets feature. Um, you know, somebody lays down a, a piano line, a, a, a bass line, and somebody else gets inspired, they duet it and play on top of it. Um, I think a huge trend just to start off the year that really um, utilizes this was the whole sea shanties thing. Who, who got sea shanties in their thread uh, or in their, in their For You feed? Uh, this is Nathan Evans, an unsigned artist, a postman from Scotland. Uh, shared a classic version of The Wellerman, which I had not heard of until this whole thing went. Uh, but then all these other guys started duetting, 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 and harmonizing on top of that. Um, that whole thing, I mean, tying it back to the top of the show, uh, made it to Jimmy Fallon where they did a sea shanty style remix of Driver's License, which I guess, you know, we really just proves, you know, whether on network television or otherwise, you're really just living in TikTok's world. Um, but, you know, this duets feature is really how Blue has, has really in, built her fan base on TikTok. Um, duetting, um, use, duetting bass covers uh, with popular songs, um, you know, Blue, like, how did you like first approach TikTok uh, when when you when you took to the platform? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I've been playing like bass forever, like since I was seven, um, and I was always like touring and in bands and writing songs, and um, I was DJing a lot also, like since I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. I got really into that, and um, I kind of like. It's weird because I, when I was DJing, I would like bring my bass everywhere, and I was kind of getting known known for this as like bringing my bass and like improvising bass lines over these pop songs, um, which mm. I didn't even realize, but it's literally what I do on TikTok as well. Um, so that kind of gave me a lot of practice, but um, I was doing that and I was writing my own songs and I put a few songs out and then I was on tour with these other artists and then lockdown hit. And I always like had the app downloaded and I was so like super intrigued by it and would kind of like make jokes to my friends like, I'm gonna go viral on TikTok, guys, like as a joke, but I wasn't joking. Um, and um, 
yeah, like March 2nd, I posted my first video. I was like, let me just like try this out, see what happens. And I just put up my phone and I saw that Say So was trending by um, Doja Cat. And I just like literally five minutes played some bass over it and it got like 100,000 likes and like overnight. And I was like, okay, this is crazy. And I saw it like transferring over to my other socials and people were just like really into it. Um, so then when lockdown hit, I just posted a video every single day um, doing that same sort of thing. And people were like going crazy. And then I put um, my song out and the, the timing was just like really perfect. And then Figure It Out did really well on the app as well. So it all clicked, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, Figure It Out went, went very viral on the platform. Um, a lot of elements to that one that really caused it to go viral. I think that that one, two, three, four sort of intro, I think really uh, solidified itself as an earworm uh, across the platform for the period of time. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, seeing yourself get views and get likes based off of covering something else. Like, what was it like when people started engaging and interacting with your own material? Oh my God, it was crazy because, I mean, you want your own song, I mean, you want your own songs to pop off, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's all great that um, people are getting inspired by just like my playing and stuff like that. That means the world to me, but to have my own songs do well on the app is just like a whole other thing. But I think um, just the fact that my platform was growing already before I put the song out just gave me so much more confidence, I think, when I did put out the song. Um, and when I like went back to, to keep writing because I saw that all these people were reacting really positively to like bass at the forefront tracks. Um, and I was like, this is sick, like figure it out. It has like, the baseline is like everything. Um, and I think that's probably why the reason it also did well, just because like my thing that I was already doing and then my songs, um, you know, it's the same, it's just me. It's just my personality and I'm doing all, you know, I'm the one behind it. So if people are on board with like my whole thing, then um, they're probably gonna like my song. Or I assume that they'll, enjoy my songs as well um because it doesn't sound too different than just what i'm already doing over like the other music stuff but um yeah i think it's just a really good like experimentation tool as well just to like try all these things and people are like well the bass is sick and i was like i agree i'm gonna put it all my songs have like crazy bass lines now like um but yeah it's crazy yeah the bass is just so important I just think that's so dope that like you can see everyone blow up for playing any instruments like how walker for playing the cane or the con um like you it's just so cool you can see so many different people playing so many different instruments really getting a voice thanks yeah and i, th I think it's one of the coolest things has been like i think there's this new community of like instrumentalists especially like female instrumentalists just coming out of the app like I've just seen it so much more since I started like there were only a few people um when I joined the app that were that were kind of doing this thing and then when figured out came out like the amount of messages and I stuff and stuff that I got of people um playing the song like this new song that I put out vintage like I get millions of videos a day of just like not millions but like a bunch of videos a day of um these like younger players, you know, learning the part and then sending me videos of them playing the part and stuff and then duetting and putting it on TikTok and all that stuff. So I think it's just, it's cool that, um, you know, so much stuff out of TikTok, TikTok is inspiring people to like actually pick up real instruments and like transfer to like the physicality of it and not just, um, you know, making the videos, but actually learning something outside of it and then showcasing it is really, really important. Yeah, I think that's why people at, uh, like in the music industry value TikTok so much because everybody at a record label with however many artists that they sign, right? They probably have like, I don't know, they, it's like, what, what is it like four, four, uh, 40 a year or something like 70 a year or something like that. Um, the whole conversation at the label is how can we get this person to impact culture? You know, like how can we get this person to like have a personality? all the kids on TikTok are doing that already. So they did the 50% of the job. That's why people are getting, you know, deals and stuff like that. It's because we're doing half the work for them and we just have all this leverage, you know, it's a different type of game. The old, the old pop stars or the old, old, old people in the industry have this thing against being on social media all the time. 
and, and they're like, oh, it's about the music. It's just about the vibe. We're doing this and that, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. It's not, it's about showing who you are and being like literally on the same level as your audience, you know? And I think it's important. Right, especially now during the pandemic, it's the only way to like, to connect with, fan with fans and connect with people. And that's the other cool thing about TikTok. It's, it's putting you out. It's like showcasing you out to more and more, pe more people than you would have if you held a show and you know the one your one fan told your 10 friends like TikTok is literally pushing you out to you know if you like music you've probably seen me and Ty's videos on your 40 page which is like insane to think about how crazy that algorithm is I think yeah. Yeah, no I totally agree with that just like having that chance to personally connect with someone like the person behind the song is just so powerful like I feel like music is such an intimate art form you know it's like more personal than I feel like really anything out there but I mean I guess I'm biased but I think not only is it like cool that underknown like independent artists and stuff can get their voice heard and stuff but like all the big names on TikTok like you can get a Lizzo could duet you like what what other social media platform is Lizzo gonna like duet you on you know what I mean and like I feel like TikTok because its algorithm is so good at showing your videos to like anyone it's like you can get noticed by people who you've listened to and loved for so long and I just think that like it's just so powerful how it's bringing so many people together yeah and kind of like speaking on that front of like you never know who's gonna listen to your song is like it's crazy seeing like other industry, like professionals kind of coming on this app, whether it's like Mark Ronson, producer extraordinaire, and he's like duetting people that are singing along to the song and being like, oh my God, your tone is so beautiful. Or like, I love the way you sing this part or the lyrics or whatever. Or you get like Zane Lowe, who is now on TikTok and he's like, yo, this song's crazy. I'm going to play this on my show tomorrow or whatever. Um, so it, it is really cool that you don't know who's going to see your stuff. Yeah. Ty, you just you just got a Zane Lowe interview recently, like last week. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. That was wild. It's because I've seen I've seen all my favorites do it with him. I saw Dominic Pike do it. I saw mm. him do it. So it was really cool to be on the show. Um, and hopefully I can just keep, keep pushing, keep breaking down these, these barriers. Yeah. And, and I mean, Zane Lowe being on the platform, I mean, he's basically posting like Max and Dev. I mean, he's, he's, he's probably looking to you guys for inspiration. I mean, that is, I don't know. I mean, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, right? I mean, you guys are really defining this genre of like music journalism on TikTok, and like to see Zane kind of like do that is must be super cool. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's wild. I mean, like he's definitely been doing his thing on radio for a long time, but um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's cool seeing similar stuff happening yeah. between everyone. <laughs> so, like you know, obviously you talked about you talked about Mark Ronson coming on the platform. Um, you know, we've also seen Mick Fleetwood come on the platform. Um, we've also seen uh, uh, All Time Low. Uh, uh, Huba Stank, uh, a bunch of songs from the past. So just to call out the fact that like, you know, we've been talking a lot about the big blockbuster artists. We've been talking about a lot of emerging artists, but like, you know, the catalog uh, divisions are 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 coming in, in droves to the platform. Um, vintage songs are popping up all over the place. Um, Boney M's Rasputin, I think is about to cross like 2 million streams. Uh, I don't know. Are there any are there any vintage favorites that you guys have seen sort of pop up here? Uh, Billy Joel, I think, is is as having a moment right now with Zanzibar, which like isn't even <laughs> one of his biggest hits. <laughs> I feel like your head on my shoulders is one of those songs that's like been consistently massive on the platform. Yeah, um, just the two of us too was like a big was a big one. Yes. So that song's such a, I mean, dreams, it's just like funny. I mean, it's really cool because like, you know, these kids, these 12 year olds are now listening to like Bill Withers, it's like what? Like, yeah. what? like why? Like that's crazy. Um, and Fleetwood Mac. So it's, it's cool that they're, you know, just from the education standpoint of like music history that they're finding these, these old songs that are such classics, you know, they're finding it through TikTok, which is, it's crazy. It's not only a way to find new music, it's a way to reconnect with 
with the old stuff, which is super cool. They're yeah. doing it through their parents too. Uh, a lot of like, check this out, mom. Or remember uh, the uh, there was a there was a brief uh, a, a moment with Japanese city pop um, with that "Stay with Me" song uh, that went viral. Like, hey, like show your show your mom this song and watch her reaction. And just watching people react to that, I think was so cool. That's sick. Really good one. Yeah, it's so awesome how wide the reach is. Like you're exposed to so much different music from so many different cultures. Like a lot of songs from Russian artists show up on my feed too. And I'm just like, wow, like this is so awesome. Like I'm finding so many artists that like I never heard of before from like all over the world. Molchat Doma. Does that name set for me, ring a bell? They went they they went viral for a while. I'd never heard of them. Russian like grunge punk band. Great. Wow. That sounds everywhere. Everywhere. And also like I feel like an interesting trend. Speaking of like these catalog songs coming back, is like I don't know. Maybe it's just like I'm noticing it more recently. But like I wonder if artists are gonna be increasingly like sampling or using these old songs. I mean, obviously sampling's been prevalent, but seeing a song like Illy go viral on TikTok and absolutely take off, which is, um, so I don't know. I wonder if, I'll, I'll be curious to see if that becomes more prevalent too. Yeah, and I think like also the use of the mashup is just like blowing up, partly because of how easy it is to do on TikTok and how easy it is to upload your own sounds. Like I see all these, you know, DJs on TikTok, you know, the clubs are closed. So this is the only thing you can do right now is like <laughs> put your mixes on, you know, do these like 30 second mixes um, and take requests too, which is, you know, usually forbidden in the DJ community. Like no one takes requests, but on TikTok, it's actually really fun um, and the way to connect. And like, I've seen so many of these, these like DJs mashups go super viral um, on the app and they're like making it through TikTok and uploading it through TikTok. So that's, that's yeah. crazy as well. There's that guy Amorphous that just uh, that just got on Oprah, did the the mashup of Rihanna and Luther Vandross, that uh, you know got licensed and now he's off to the races as far as like a, a having a hit song. I mean that that's a really exciting thing to watch. Wow. Yeah. I'm just make, making everyone money over here. You can make so money. Like when, the, <laughs> when the club when 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 outside opens again and you're when and we're at you know we're all we're all at the uh, the Megan the Stallion uh, uh, show is uh you know are, are we gonna be are we gonna be uh, shouting out the lyrics or, or, or are we gonna look across the crowd and see everyone doing the savage dance uh, to to uh, that song in the crowd? <laughs> both. I can't wait to see so many people in like a mosh pit doing like the. <laughs> oh my god. Like a circle. All the kids. The parents are gonna be mortified. I think it's kinda cool. Ah, it's like we all we're all doing a thing together now. Like you know, we have a common dance. Yeah, it's it is sick. Or or it's gonna be wild like when you're in the club and like you only recognize a song from TikTok, so you rec like you can sing ten seconds of the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> I guarantee when the clubs open back up, M to the B will be in the club. I would get yeah. Oh, 100%. All of those are going to be in the club, I think. It's going to be cool to see. Well, well, speaking of, you know, the future of, of, of clubs and maybe just going outside in general, um, you know, just to, just to tease out, uh, you know, Blue, uh, you have your debut EP uh, 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 coming out. How do we get here? Due out March 5th. Shout out to Blue. Uh, so, uh, so everyone at home. Pre-save, sorry. Yeah, everyone go out pre-save. I think it'll be out by the time okay, the never mind. panel drops. Stream. <laughs> so go stream it. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and yeah. Ty, what, what have you got in the works? Give, give us a little bit of taste. Give us a taste. Oh, oh man. Well, we got another single, which is going to set up the, the debut album coming soon. So we're getting it. We're getting it in. I'm just trying to be as big as Blue. Nah, dude, come on. <laughs> awesome, guys. Um, yeah. Dev, Max, anything anything you guys want to shout out before we wrap it up here? Um, yeah, I mean, it would mean the world to me if you guys checked out my music. My name is Dev Lemons. You can find me anywhere. 
uh, and shout out Song Psych, shout out Peter and good content, and shout out to my mom. Shout out Peter, shout out Song Psych, shout out mom. Yes. Max, shout, out the words? <laughs> shout out the parents, obviously. Um, and like, yeah, if you if you haven't checked out Mostly Music, definitely check that out. Um, I even have a podcast with Blue to Tiger in, in an episode. So <laughs> if you liked us talking in here, you could listen to that maybe. I don't know. But um, yeah. Well, awesome. I think that about wraps it up. Um, if you guys at home are all still watching, uh, thank you for sticking around this long. And uh, follow everyone here. And um, have a nice day. Sweet. <laughs>